Hello everyone, Sam and Gamey, and today I have the pleasure of bringing you my very, very first FIFA 13 Ultimate Team video. Now, this video is all going to be about my cup run in a gold cup. And as you can see in my first game here, I'm playing a little bit of a hodgepodge 11. Got, I think that's Alvaro Pereira at the back. You know, a decent team, but nothing too spectacular. But, you know, my team by this point has Van Persie, Cazorla, Kabai. Um, Hangeland, Tim Howard, you know, it's a really, really good side. And I'm playing the 4 3 1 2 formation. The great thing about that is you're nice and compact in the midfield, but as you can see from that goal there, when you have a pacey centre forward like Cazorla, he can get round the flanks, put the ball in, and when you've got Jibril Cisse and Robin Van Persie, your two strikers, goals are very, very easy to come through. And now, another reason why I really, really like this formation is it's very, very quick on the break. And I always like to play counter-attacking football, especially when you're up against the better player who can keep a lot of possession against you. By having this nice, compact midfield, but at the same time, having the pacey options up front, it really does enable you to bomb burst out. And I absolutely love that celebration. It's hilarious. But that was a nice second goal. This one was a little bit more of a passing move. Not the ball in. James Milner got a little bit lucky here twice, but then manages to slide in nicely, put it in the bottom corner for 3-0 inside. I think this is 40 minutes. I can't quite see on my mini screen, but you know, three chances really, three good goals. So good start, and as you can see, pretty much straight from the kickoff. Go down the right flank, and what I always like to do is just to keep the ball moving. You, know, you don't want one player to be sitting on it for too long unless it's in space. Just keep the ball moving, keep using the triangles, Give and goes as well. Fantastic option. Holding L1 when you pass. You really can ping through. And Van Persie battles his way through and drills the finish near post. Absolutely great finish from RVP there. And another really, really funny celebration. I absolutely love the celebrations you can buy from the EA Sports Football Club. You know, if you haven't checked that out, go and have a look. And as you can see here, the score's already at 4 0. The guy kicks off, put pressure on him early, force the mistake. And then from here, you can just rinse and repeat. Pass, move. Keep the ball moving. Make sure one player is on it too long. Try and pick the right ball. You get your little bit of luck every now and again. But that's a lovely little dink over the top. Put the ball to the back post. And no one misses there, especially Jibbal Cissé. So that's five goals created. Very, very simple play. You know, you don't want to overcomplicate things too much, especially when you're learning a new FIFA. But unfortunately, I couldn't manage to hang on to the clean sheet. I switched off a little bit when I went 5 0 up. A little bit understandable. And the guy capitalises a nice little passing move. And a good finish from Janssen into the bottom corner. But you know, there's not well, too to much to get downhearted about. When you're 3, you 4, 5 nil up and you go on to concede one or two goals, good don't pass. beat yourself up too much about it. Because when so the game major. was in the balance, you managed to keep it tight. But that's just a really, really good finish. There's not too many keepers in the world who would have saved that. Pinged it into the bottom corner. And that's how it finished, 5-2. So that's a really, really good first game in the cup. It's always nice to have a nice, good performance. And really lead you into the second game and this was the team I was up against in the second game once again a bit of a hodgepodge team you, you know you've got Paul Robinson in goal from the championship you've got a host of French players a host of French league players and just one or two randomness darted in and this is not the way to build your ultimate team I know if you get packs early on and decide to keep the players you can get a little bit of a random combination but you want to as far as possible to keep your players in the same league to give you that high chemistry bonus because well, you can see I have a full Premier League team and that 100 chemistry really does make it easy but you know, this guy one thing he did have was an incredibly tight defence he sat in really kept it tight and I was having to ping shots from long distance the keeper came up with some great saves and it ended up having to take Santi Gazzola to bicycle kick it in to win me that game so sometimes you just got to grind the results out and I was really really pleased that I managed to there and just Thanks moving into the third company, game, I'd just like to mention that if you guys have any ideas for FIFA tutorials, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments or send me a message because what I'm doing is I'm doing smaller bite-sized tutorials for you guys. So if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments and I will happily do them. But as you can see here, moving into the semi-final, I'm up against the German league side with like Jerome Boateng, but with a few guest appearances from uh, Fabio Coentrao at left back and see there, and Mesut Ozil in centre attacking mid. So it's a pretty solid team this. But once again, you know, I get the start that you need. It's very, very important to start well in ultimate team. You know, got a little bit lucky with the rebounds. 
but you've got to have the players in the right position. That's why I love this formation because you've always got the very, very minimum three players on the attack because sometimes when you play just with one up front or you're playing a slightly more midfield heavy formation, you can be a little bit slow to break out, but having that 4-3-1-2 means that even if you are on a counter-attack and no other players get forward, you're still going to have the two strikers and centre forward to capitalise and it's just a great formation. As you can see here, Rossicky playing in that centre forward position in for Cazorla who was uh, rested for this game can just sweep in late pick the ball up and ping it into the top corner really really well and it's a great formation and that's one of the main reasons why I like it but as you can see it wasn't all one way traffic this was a little bit shoddy defending here I thought my uh, centre half was going to get to that so I was just holding the ball expecting him to run onto it he didn't run away the striker got on it checked it back for a little bit of a scum goal but you know, when you're 2-0 down you've got to take any chance you get and I'm not going to begrudge the guy for doing that but fortunately I managed to get myself refocused get the ball down and actually start to pass it again and that is a lovely ball over the top by Van Persie drops straight to Jibril Cisse who thunders it into the bottom corner you know, it's all about staying flexible if your passing and moving isn't working try some diagonal balls try something different and as you can see here another diagonal ball over the top really splits his defence so Open and Van Persie does not miss those so that was 4-1 a really really good finish and just good to see lots of different types of goals if you're always looking for a way to improve at FIFA T scoring different types of goals is a great way to go about it because if you just only score with long shots or only score with tappings from balls worked down the wing or only score from crosses you're going to be struggling you need to try and find ways to attack in multiple different ways and then if you do that and manage to put your chances away you can get through to the final now I'm not going to spoil this final for you it was an absolutely great game this is the probably the best guy I've played so far on Ultimate Team this year, you know, he had an absolute rock-solid defence, he counter-attacked with pace, he kept the ball well, you know, we were so, so evenly matched, and I think you can see from the game just how evenly matched we are, but as you can see, that's his team there, nice and solid again, a very, very interesting formation, a 4-2-2-2, which is what Man City played for the majority of last season. It's great because you've got the solidity of two holding midfielders, the two strikers, and then those two centre attacking mids who wander in and out. It's a very, very useful formation. It's quite difficult to counter those centre attacking mids. And as you can see, you know, Jovetic has got a tiny bit of space in the box, and that guy put it away brilliantly into the top corner on Jovetic's weakest foot as well. So that was a great finish, but you know, I had to keep battling. This guy really didn't give me an inch. And right until about the 80th minute, I was battling to get back in this game, but I took the free it quickly got down the wing that's a lovely ball from Zabaleta and Gibral Cisse is an absolute goal machine if you guys haven't bought him and you do the Premier League team go and buy him he is pretty cheap I think I got mine for about 5k so that's not a lot of work at all to get him and he is a monster he's quick he's strong he's great in the air and scores a bag full of goals but unfortunately going into extra time now they're battling for it Tim Howard's really should have done better the header came straight at him from a story palmed it straight back and the guy is not going to miss on a rebound from five yards and I really thought I was crashing out there in the final but fortunately in the 120th minute RVP battling forward the keeper's up swung the ball in from Cazola the keeper comes and who's that man again Jibble Cisse heads it into the empty net for two all to go into the penalty shootout in the final now this is the most ridiculous penalty shootout I've ever seen. You know, the, the first few penalties went pretty pretty straightforward. You know, we were about three all before anyone started to miss. I missed one with Mikel. He missed one straight after. I scored mine straight after. And then the biggest, most ridiculous save I've ever seen from Tim Howard. Well, I should say save. He really should have saved it. But Tim Howard absolutely flopped me in this penalty shootout. I was battling back. I was really pleased to come back twice, late in normal time and then late in extra time. You know, it shows that you, you know, a good team if you can come back when you go behind. And I, I was really hoping I could nick this in a uh, in a penalty shootout because obviously this tournament was for 2,000 gold coins and a gold pack. And Tim Howard really should have saved that penalty as well. I forgot about that one, but you know, it would have been a great tournament to win. But unfortunately, it wasn't to be. I'd been taking the penalties brilliantly, as you can see here. They're all flashing into the corners. But sometimes it isn't your day, and when you have random events happen, 
and that's what really is a problem with FIFA occasionally. You just get that little bit of randomness, which doesn't would never really happen at a professional level. But unfortunately, it does happen on FIFA. It punishes you, and you've just got to learn to live with it. You can't win every time. But hopefully, this run has given me enough confidence and shown that my team's good enough as well, which is an important thing, to move on. But here we go. As you saw, I miss with Mikel. He misses his penalty straight after hits the bar. I'm not sure what Howard is doing there. He'll flop to the floor again. Up steps big Darren Fletcher, who's another really good cheap Premier League player if you guys are interested. Thunders the penalty into the top corner. And then this is the moment. The Tim Howard moment. I'm just going to be quiet. Watch this penalty. Tim Howard saves it, drops it, stands up and then kicks the ball in. And I was absolute, I was ready to punch my TV at this stage. And it wasn't perhaps too surprising that I balled my penalty up after it and went on to lose. But guys, I really hope you've enjoyed watching my first FIFA 13 Ultimate Team video. You know, it was a really good cup run. The guy I met in the final, we were so evenly matched. He's a really, really good player. But losing in that circumstance was really, really difficult to take. You know, done really well to get to the final, done fantastically well to come from behind twice to take it to the penalties and then you really know when it's not going to be your day when Tim Howard who normally is a very very solid keeper throws it into the back of the net so guys once again thank you so so much for watching loads of FIFA stuff to come and most importantly have a very very good day